Okay, we are up to our two o'clock session here, two o'clock central time. Um, big talk from Small Libraries 2023. And um, it's, it's the middle of the afternoon, so I think everyone's due for a snack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a snack, a cup of coffee, tea, whatever you need. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, Jessica is here uh, from um, Georgia Southern University to talk to us about a outreach program they did in their small library, uh, providing snacks. Um, everybody wants snacks. Mm -hmm. Keep going for the afternoon. So um, I'll hand it over to you, Jessica, to go ahead and tell us how you did this at your library. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so hi, everyone. I'm Jessica. I uh, just started my um, employment here in uh, June. So we are um, almost a year, getting close to a year um, of employment at Georgia Southern University. Uh, and I'm sure everybody's scratching their heads wondering, what are you doing here? Georgia Southern is a uh, pretty big institution, <laughs> right? Well, uh, which is fine, right? I can explain. <laughs> uh, so some background about Georgia Southern is uh, we're a public R2 university in Georgia, and the main campus, which is the one that most people are familiar with, is located in Statesboro, Georgia. It services about 17,000 students at any, give, at, um, any given time. I think the total might have been 18,000 pre-pandemic, but it's dropped a little bit since, you know, COVID. Uh, in 2018, um, Armstrong State University was consolidated with Georgia Southern University, um, and Armstrong State University used to uh, what was in um, Savannah, Georgia, um, was a much smaller college, and uh, we have kind of maintained our small campus feel um, as part of Georgia Southern University, um, just with our smaller um, Armstrong campus in Savannah. We uh, service about 4,600 uh, students right now, so um, it is definitely um, a very small feel. Yes, um, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it even feels smaller today. Uh, Fridays, we don't get as many of our commuter students around, and um, our campus is mostly commuters, so uh, it's kind of like, hello, where is everybody? <laughs> um, yes, so uh, out of the um, library system, we have uh, three locations on uh, those two campuses. Uh, first, there's Henderson Library, which is the main library at the Statesboro campus. Uh, there's also Lane Library, which is the um, library on the Armstrong campus. And then we have a second building on the Armstrong campus called the Learning Commons, which is a little bit more tech forward, is um, has a really big uh, board game collection, uh, has a bit more of kind of like a um, open workspace kind of feel, whereas the library, um, Lane Library, is a little bit more of like a traditional library setup um, for now. Things are changing, but as they do with academia, everything changes quite slowly. <laughs> uh, so. The first time that we had a snack cart initiative was actually in the, uh, about a year ago, actually. Uh, my colleague, Melissa Brown, who is the uh, uh, outreach coordinator for uh, George Southern University Libraries, uh, came up with the idea in order to, um, one, engage students during a stressful period, um, is when they're taking final exams. Uh, to advertise uh, Henderson Library's 24-hour um, facility hours during final exam week. Um, they're not open 24 hours uh, usually, but during final exam week, they will operate on a 24-hour schedule until exams are over. And then the third thing was to get students um, kind of have a direct line for them to connect with their library liaison for whatever uh, major that they're in. So uh, those were her main three objectives with the snack cart initiative um, initially. I thought it was cute. Um, it's the Zach S. Henderson Library, and so they called it Zach Snacks, um, and I love a good <laughs> rhyme. Uh, <laughs> they made their rounds at 11 p.m., so very late in the evening. Um, they'd go through all four floors of Henderson Library, and uh, during this time, they serviced almost 500 um, students. Um, so it was a really big hit. Um, a lot of students were really appreciative of the initiative. Um, we considered it a success. 
um, based on that. And uh, we wanted to expand it in the next semester so that students on the Armstrong campus would also feel appreciated. Uh, now, between May and December 2022, uh, one big change was that I arrived. <laughs> Uh, so when Melissa was doing the first snack cart run, uh, she was really kind of doing outreach um, by herself in a way. Uh, she, Melissa is wonderful. She has a lot of, uh, she's a um, library um, professional, but she's not a, a librarian. So I think this is her first library job. Um, mm -hmm. So she was kind of like unfamiliar with some of the um, you know, library and stuff that we have to do, like um, logging stuff um, for like assessment purposes and um, accreditation and stuff like that. So she, uh, you know, once we kind of arrived, we were able to lend a hand with stuff that she, um, you know, is working on and already had um, been developing like the snack cart initiative, but we were able to uh, kind of emphasize we need to collect data, we need to have, um, more clear learning objectives and we need to um, assess those objectives so uh, we're still kind of working on that a little bit but um, it's been a big help to have her and to have her have already been here um, before I started in July uh, but I started my position here on the Armstrong campus in July um, I was uh, hired first, and then my counterpart at the main campus the Statesboro campus began work uh, at Georgia Southern University in September of 2022. Uh, during that time, we uh, have built on some of the initiatives that um, Melissa started. We have um, kind of oofed up some things, um, and it's been a lot of fun working with both of them. Uh, ma the main things that we're called to do as outreach and in instruction librarians is obviously to teach information literacy. Um, we are also going to um, kind of coordinate an outreach program that's a little bit more um, interconnected and um, intentional. Uh, we're still working on um, coming up with like overarching um, objectives for the program, but um, fingers crossed coming soon. And uh, we are also tasked with chairing two um, library committees, um, one of them being student outreach and one of them being communications and marketing. So um, that's the majority of what kind of like takes up my work time, um, as is probably evidenced by the uh, workshop like look of my office. <laughs> <laughs> I often joke around that it looks like there's always a project in progress here and that's because there is. <laughs> So uh, in preparation for the fall 2022 snack carts, now that we've got two new uh, crew members on board, now that we have uh, tried it in one location and we want to expand to more locations, uh, one thing that had to change, sadly, was to rename the snack cart from Zach Snacks to something a bit more generic. Um, the Communications and Marketing Committee um, has been really pushing to uh, brand Georgia Southern University Libraries as one entity, right, regardless of the campus. And um, part of that is to make sure that there's not, um, you know, anything that feels too exclusive -y to one campus or another. So uh, that's why we kind of just thought GS Library, Snack Cart, we've got the cart thing. Um, I think it's going to be clear what we're trying to do here, and it's going to grab students' attention. So um, as much as I love a rhyme, uh, we had to do away with Zach Snacks. <laughs> uh, the Snack Cart on the Statesboro campus also ran prior to final exams week. Uh, it would run the week before final exams started, um, and this is because the uh, one of the purposes was to advertise Henderson Library's 24-hour uh, um, schedule for the time that final exams happen. Uh, however, on the Armstrong campus, because there is not any demand for that, um, we do not open 24 hours on our campus. Um, we just keep our regular hours during exam week. So because we didn't have that to advertise, we elected to do our snack cart um, during the week of final exams because our rationale was well students might need that pick me up while they're um, in the middle of studying for their exams and um, th that might be more appreciated then. 
Uh, the snack cart at Statesboro also began rounds at 11 p.m. And since we um, close at 11 p.m. at Lane Library, we were like, ah, we're going to have to run a little bit earlier than this. We also have found um, we are working on bolstering and getting more uh, people in the facility uh, at Lane Library. But uh, as of right now, um, after about five o'clock, the attendance um, in our facilities drops off significantly. Mm -hmm. So we thought we might have one snack cart go around at 430 to catch people before they left and another round at 630 after they've had a chance to maybe eat some dinner and hunker down for their uh, studying for the evening. Um, you know, and, and doing it at those two times might capture a lot of people before they go home. Uh, we also recruited uh, faculty from the reference and instruction department um, at the Lane Library to snack, uh, staff the snack cart. Uh, so I'm really appreciative of them uh, for helping me. Um, you know, push the cart around. Uh, I can't remember. There was one day that I had something else, like some sort of conflict, and. Um, Lauren was like, oh, no, I've got this all night. You go home. And I was like, oh, really? OK, great. Bye. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of a relief to have uh, someone just kind of take over for me and know exactly what to do. Uh, we also listed the snack cart events in our branded uh, Presence I.O. platform. Some of you might use Presence um, at my prior um, institution before starting to work at Georgia Southern University. Um, we did not use this, but I was aware of um, Presence and its capabilities. Um, what it can do is uh, market events, um, but it can also collect um, attendance. You can scan in with your university ID and so it allows you to check in for events and then allows us to um, see some information about the type, the people who um, attended, um, kind of see like did we get high attendance from um, you know the freshman class, did we get high attendance from um, you know biology majors or something like that and it'll give us some information like that uh, which is really nice when we're trying to uh, engage certain groups. Uh, so we were able to uh, market the event in um, Eagle Engage is our uh, way to brand presence um, for Georgia Southern. And uh, we also um, unfortunately set them up a little bit differently. Um, again, because I'm still uh, I at the time was relatively new to Georgia Southern, I thought, uh, oh, I'll just put in one event for the whole week, the whole duration, and it'll be fine. I'll just you know collect IDs and um, we'll just get a number of like how many people um, attended. Uh, unfortunately, this meant that I could only take uh, scan one person's ID one time. Uh, so if they got a snack Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it only counted as once. I was like, oh, oh well. <laughs> so that's what we learned uh, from that experience. But um, we did also learn that Eagle Engage was a popular way to uh, market the event to students uh, because this will show up in the um, Georgia Southern app. It uh, you know, tell students about the uh, things that are going on on campus. And uh, I think a lot of them saw snacks during finals. What? what how can I get these? <laughs> I want something to uh, munch on. So, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, Georgia Southern uh, on the Statesboro campus services about 17,000 students. We don't even service 5,000. So I'm thinking certainly half the amount of uh, materials that they're ordering for the Statesboro campus should be enough to get us through. Um, we're, we're less than half the size. Uh, so we ordered, um, you know, the list is there. Um, the total cost for uh, the snack cart initiative was $139.20. And I'm thinking, this should be enough. You know, we don't have a whole lot of students in the uh, library facility um, during the evenings. And, uh, you know, the, the advertising has mostly been word of mouth. Um, so this should be fine, right? Wrong. <laughs> but in the best way. <laughs> So I always say that the, like, the, the um, best problem to have with an initiative like this is that there's too much interest. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. We can always work with that. 
So uh, this year, uh, or at least last semester, um, fall 2022, we had uh, 313 unique attendees at Statesboro and 195 unique attendees at Armstrong, right? Uh, this reflects 1.84% of the students on the Statesboro campus, but almost 5% of the students on the Armstrong campus. So even though we uh, serviced fewer students by the numbers, uh, word got out to those students and they told their friends about it and they uh, told their friends about it and everybody was showing up to get snacks um, over the course of the week, which was a great problem to have. Um, I was ecstatic. Um, however, because of the uh, popularity of the event, uh, we ran out of snacks pretty quickly. <laughs> We ended up having to um, buy and uh, get donations from the other library employees, um, combined about $60 worth of uh, snacks, which um, I hate to do. Uh, I don't usually ask for uh, donations, but everybody um, here was very gracious and just offered to donate um, food. I made sure to get their receipts afterwards. So um, hopefully next year we can just request more money for the initiative in general. Uh, I also wanted to make note that because of the differences in the way that we set up um, recording attendance for this event, um, there were 408 total interactions at the Statesboro campus. Um, so they interacted with students 408 times, but they saw 313 students in those interactions. Um, we don't know how many interactions we had at the Armstrong campus because of how I set up the uh, data collecting tool. So um, because of that, I don't have a full comparison one um, one to the other, but uh, it, it feels as though we had to have at least had um, at least it feels like we were seeing a lot of the same students every day. So I would not be surprised if we had uh, 250 interactions or so. Um, but that's just a guess. I can't tell you um, based on the numbers. Yeah, you can uh, have your regulars, your, your repeat, repeat mm -hmm. users. <laughs> yeah, repeat users. They were going to be in the library anyway, and then they brought some friends. And, uh, you know, so we saw them like three times. But the first time we saw them, it was just them. Second time, it was a study group. Third time, it was them and another buddy. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I love that this is so popular. But uh, whoo. <laughs> So uh, for 2023, we are uh, definitely going to be setting up our assessment the same way at both campuses so that this doesn't become a problem anymore. Uh, looking ahead to spring uh, 2023, we're going to, again, like I said, create a separate event for each day that we're going to be distributing snacks so that uh, the data can be recorded at both locations the same way. We're also going to ask for an increased budget, and because I was able to collect receipts from the donations, uh, we do have numbers to back up that this is as much um, money as it takes to make this initiative successful. Uh, I anticipate that we will probably be able to get this initiative done with uh, $250 or so. Um, I worry though because the uh, next, this is the first semester that we've done the snack cart at the Armstrong campus. And uh, with it being um, the popularity and word of mouth spreading so fast that week, uh, they'll be expecting it again this semester. And I wonder what our numbers will look like um, based on that word of mouth. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we kind of go back and forth sometimes. Should we do word of mouth and just rely on word of mouth for marketing? Because then we can um, hopefully make the snacks that we do purchase stretch for the whole week a little bit. Um, or should we do more intentional marketing to interact with more students and service more students, uh, even if that means we run out? And we haven't really come to a decision uh, yet about what we should do about that. Um, the sticky thing about uh, doing intentional marketing is that if we do the intentional marketing on the Armstrong campus where there are fewer students and we might be able to accommodate um, 
well, certainly not all 4,600 students coming, but um, most of the student, a lot of the students uh, coming to um, participate in the snack cart week. Uh, I don't know that they'd be able to accommodate that at the, at the Statesboro campus, um, just, just based on the sheer volume of students that they have there. And, um, you know, we'll really have to work with them about what would be the uh, best marketing strategy going forward. And then finally, um, if this is something that you want to uh, do at your uh, institution, uh, it helps to have established written objectives. I think something that we need to do um, and improve upon here is make sure that they are uh, very directly measurable objectives, uh, because we have the objective of we want students to be able to uh, get in touch with their library liaison easier, right? Um, but we don't have a whole lot of numbers to back up um, that students followed through with the information they received. So they would get a uh, on their snacks a little label like this, mm -hmm. right? It's a little QR code that puts them in touch with the library and liaisons page where they can uh, you know, figure out who their liaison is, um, send them an email or schedule an appointment with them. Uh, but we don't know how many of these uh, students um, actually followed through on the invitation to connect with a liaison. Um, and even if they did connect with a liaison, we don't know if they uh, found that out as a result of the snack cart initiative. Um, and that's just one example. We have other um, objectives from the initi um, initiative, so that doesn't mean that we uh, can't do it in the future. Um, but when budgets are tight, like um, budgets are getting tight around here, then uh, it helps to have very um, clear written objectives and a very clearly spelled out uh, a plan of how you're going to measure those objectives um, moving forward. Um, this would be a good way to secure funds at whatever um, institution you plan to uh, do this kind of thing for. So, so um, things that we learned, um, things that I learned at least, is that word of mouth travels really fast on a small campus. Um, it moved much faster than I anticipated, actually. Uh, like I said, I was expecting to service about half of what uh, they did at Statesboro, and I think we exceeded half. Um, it wasn't quite the same number, but we uh, definitely broke half. Um, I'd say we probably serviced about two thirds of the same amount of students. Um, also keep records. Um, the more records you have about student attendance, the cost of the program, about who volunteered and when, uh, that's going to help you, um, number one, uh, make arguments for more funds or less funds in the future, um, or making um, the argument for uh, we bought Rice Krispies treats and they weren't very popular. Um, that was not the case here. They were very popular um, out of <laughs> here. But uh, if they're not at your campus, then um, you know you might think about getting a, a different item. Maybe they are more um, more of a potato chip campus or something. They don't like sweets. I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine. But <laughs> um, so keeping records of all of that information is going to uh, help you plan for the future. Um, for me, it's uh, keep as much information as you can. Um, also, it's okay to do things differently. Uh, I don't have any plans to uh, move the snack cart at the Armstrong campus to the week prior to exams. Um, I think that it worked really well for students um, while they were taking exams here, and they were really appreciative of just a quick moment to not worry about their studies and um, interact with somebody new. Um, so I, I don't anticipate making that uh, change in um, alignment with the uh, Statesboro campus. Uh, but um, some things you do want to be the same, like the um, measurements and the assessment plan, um, that should be the same for both campuses, but uh, not everything has to. Uh, and finally, I think the biggest takeaway from this is that uh, such a small thing, 
as uh, giving someone a granola bar and a little bottle of water and saying, uh, you know, I hope you do well on your exams um, has made a really big impact. Um, I can say that the Lane Library uh, has had an overall uptick in uh, students coming in to study during the day uh, since we did snack cart in the uh, fall semester. And uh, I don't know that those two things are directly related. I can't prove it. <laughs> but I do find it interesting that uh, we provided a really welcoming environment during a time of uh, their lives that was very stressful, and now they feel more comfortable being in the space. So uh, little things can have a really big impact, um, no matter uh, what demographic you're working with. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, this went off a little bit quicker than I anticipated, but uh, if you have any questions, then please feel free. I've got my um, email address displayed, and I also run um, the library's uh, Instagram account. So if you want to follow us at GS Libraries or mes message me there, then I will take that too. Thanks. Um, yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Jessica. Yeah, um, anybody, I've got uh, some things that did come in. Um, definitely, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions, mm -hmm. uh, type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I will grab that for um, for Jessica here to answer. Uh, we can chat anything, everything you want about um, snacks <laughs> um, in your library. Uh, so someone did have a comment at the very beginning, which is true. You, know, you had predicted how many you thought you would have. And of course, you were wrong. And yeah, <laughs> I'm in for food. That is one thing that I think we do know in libraries that food is something that will definitely attract people to your events, to your programs, to your meetings. <laughs> and then just having it in this case as a suddenly on the fly thing, same result. Absolutely. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, so when the original library did the first the bigger location did it this is something that i don't think you mentioned it but um one of our pre previous presenters this morning had as their thing their present in their presentation uh food in the library is a um controversial subject to some people <laughs> um and to others it's like whatever um so was there ever any sort of that's a question so any, any sort of um pushback from anyone either the original or at your library as far as should we be encouraging this in the library um or did you already have a um open people you know students can bring in what they want yeah that's actually a really good question uh for, or a good thing to raise for us. Um, at the uh, Statesboro Library, um, I believe they're, I mean, they have a coffee shop in the library, so it's kind of hard to regulate really food that, and drink no. <laughs> you know, when there's a coffee shop in the library. Yeah. Um, but generally, it's like, you know, you can have it wherever, just, you know, be careful around, you know, technology and equipment. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's kind of interesting because uh, prior to my arrival uh, on the Armstrong campus, uh, Lane Library did have a no food or drink policy uh, mm -hmm. for a while. And uh, since then, um, that has been removed. Like we, we're kind of, um, in alignment with our uh, Dean's vision for the libraries. It's been, um, removed this is a place where you can um take food have a snack or uh have have your lunch even um and hang out in the libraries for a bit uh again it's kind of like be careful around the technology please but we have plenty of spaces that uh are not near a computer or near anything that's going to be damaged so um there's no reason to not eat there uh and the snacks that we did get none of um there may be crumbs, but uh, there shouldn't be um, a lot of mess. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's been interesting because the snack cart um, kind of goes against that perception of um, you can't eat in here. And uh, that's something that we haven't had any pushback from. But we have had some students um, and faculty who are surprised 
that they can have food in here when we encourage them to, uh, you know, again, take a snack or um, one day we were giving out popcorn in front of the library for a program and uh, someone said, oh, I need to go in the library to, ch to get something from the desk. Can you hold this? And I was like, yeah, I can, but you know you can bring that inside, right? Go ahead and go on in. <laughs> and, uh, they're like, really? It was like, yeah, man, bring it inside. <laughs> it'll be fine <laughs> so um we're, we're working to change that perception here um I, I guess you can say we are officially um pro snacks in the library <laughs> but yeah. uh you know I, I i respect different opinions on it i get it yeah no and, and i think most libraries are trying to move that way to be more welcoming more yeses than nos yes um, for anything somebody may want i mean be smart don't leave a mess uh keep your drinks covered so they don't accidentally spill somewhere mm -hmm. you know you know keep a lid on or whatever or the cap on your water bottle um yeah. in a university situation or uh, college situation officially you're dealing with adults so you would hope they would be mm -hmm. uh better about it um Absolutely. in the public library it may be a different um mm -hmm. yeah because uh, someone yeah, it, it could be that, different yeah but I think we're having libraries are offering it too, encouraging it too, and having um, there are public libraries that I know that have same thing, a coffee shop in the library. So yeah, which yeah. of course I'm very jealous of. I would love to have a coffee shop here, but uh, no such luck. <laughs> um, but it is interesting. The uh, at my last job, um, which was also at an academic library, um, during the uh, COVID pandemic, like kind of like in the middle mm. of. Um, all of that they mm -hmm. uh you know the, the um facilities had um pretty much told students that they can get their food from certain locations um but they can't stick around to eat um so there was the dining hall where there was limited seating and then beyond that um especially if you were a commuter student there was no space for you to have lunch in between classes um so really the library had to be a space for that and so ever since then um, and especially at this campus that's so um commuter heavy i've been really cognizant of um you know people use this space for more than studying and mm -hmm. um a lot of times that includes food if you is, it can be a place for like to be the community center of the mm -hmm. um, campus. I mean, some camp, some universities, some campuses do have their student center where that can be. Um, mm -hmm. But it can have more than one location for that. And especially, yes, during pandemic or um, people needed to be spread out more. They couldn't, you know, we had to have restrictions. And I know mm -hmm. some places right. still are doing that or still um, or, or yeah. whether the university is doing that still on their side or just these students and faculty want the safety still because mm -hmm. we still are in the pandemic i mean they yes. <laughs> need options need more than one place to go places where you can spread out and be safer and mm -hmm. um why not be in the library <laughs> the library be one of them um yeah someone from the public library mentioned we've offered small snacks granola bars etc for a couple of years now at my library for the kids who come here after school to study or hang out until their parents come home so their own program. yeah um there are a couple of kids that take advantage regular like take advantage regularly that they say hey i'm coming in for the snack they become they've become their regular you know <laughs> uh, oh, customers <laughs> um and it you may be bringing more kids to the library too um mm -hmm. they've both mostly been using donations but she says i'm going to need to actually buy something soon because it's getting to be so much more popular uh, more mm -hmm. popular than their donations can handle Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would recommend um, trying to keep track, like a, if you haven't kept a log of donations yet, um, definitely keep a log and then try to estimate how much each donation would cost um, to get a good estimate of like how much you're going to need to buy um, or argue to need to buy if you have to run it by somebody with the budgetary control. <laughs> right, right. So that's another question for your budget. You said you had the, you had to ask for it. So there was already money somewhere in your budget that could be uh, just was mm -hmm. available to use for this you didn't have to like uh, or did you have to like ask for an increase in the library's budget or something yes like that so um let me think i don't remember specifically i think we have about 300 dollars to work with um mm -hmm. for the whole year 
um, at this campus for this specific initiative, um, which is great. And I was able to remain under that with the amount that we spent um, from the budget this time. Um, but as was evidenced by uh, the donations, we uh, that was not enough. Right. So um, with that information and with the information we'll get from uh, the snack cart at the end of this semester, um, mm -hmm. over the summer, I'll make an argument for we need more funds for this specific initiative. Sure. Having the data to back you up is, is huge. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. It's harder when you're first starting out, but um, yeah, yeah, and the and that um, number had been set before I got here. I hadn't done this before. I was like, man, I don't know. <laughs> I set aside money to buy candy, um, so I actually chair the um, communications and marketing committee, but I also uh, sit on the student outreach committee. Um, and the money for the snack cart comes from student outreach, but. Uh, the communications and marketing committee was like, oh, we can buy, you know, some candy to like put in goodie bags for, uh, you know, students who win prizes. Um, like we'll have a, a survey and if you take the survey, you get drawn to win like a coffee cup or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, fill it up with some candy, put it in a nice bag and give it to the student, right? Uh, I was like, oh, we can do like $50 for candy, you know, it'll, it'll cost nothing. I was like, oh my God, candy costs so much money. <laughs> I was like, I didn't realize how much. Like, oh man. You bought candy bulk like this before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, wow, uh, everything costs so much more money than I thought it was going to. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we do have some uh, uh, questions or suggestions about that. Um, uh, wondering if any local businesses would be willing to donate funds or of snacks or food or funding in exchange for advertising their donation on the cart. Um, mm -hmm. And someone else just says, can you find a sponsor for the food? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's a great um, question. So it becomes a little bit complicated um, because uh, we will have to go through legal in order to do so um, because uh, we don't want to compete with the um, university dining office. Uh, mm -hmm. But we do. I'm going to go back on the slides a little bit. Uh, you'll notice this is the uh, snack cart for the um, Henderson Library. Um, I never managed to get a picture of our snack cart, but it is behind me. Uh, I see that, yeah. <laughs> it has yeah. hung out in my office ever since uh, December, and I keep saying, oh, I'm going to move it back. But uh, so, but you can see here, there's a um, sign that says Three Tree Coffee Roasters. Uh, the coffee shop yeah. in um, Henderson Libraries is called Three Tree, um, and it has a couple branches that are um, external, but the um, one branch that is in the library um, was willing to donate cold brew. And so we were able to get some cold brew from them um, to give out to students um, and as well as the stuff that we bought. Uh, but we did have to go to le go through legal to um, make sure we were in the clear to accept that donation, even from a uh, in-house vendor. So um, it's mm -hmm. certainly something that we can do, um, but there are just extra steps required. For a university, yeah. For a university or college, I can see that'd be a different issue. For a, a public library doing the same thing, um, they just go the same way that they get donations all the time or um, mm -hmm. partner with businesses and organizations in the community for all any of their programs. Uh, I think we could definitely do do that. Yeah. We've definitely thought about it, though, ex expanding and trying to uh, get a couple of donations um, mm -hmm. over here in Savannah. Yeah. There should be yeah. some good places that would be into it. You would think so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We get the students to come off the campus to come to their businesses. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, here's some more questions here we still have. Uh, did you leave the library to engage the students or did you interact with the ones that just came in? So did you take the car elsewhere or have you taken it elsewhere on campus or is it just a in the library thing? That's a good question. So we did stay uh, just in the library facilities. We uh, didn't take it outside. Um, and that's partially for two reasons. Um, one of them is our dean has really been encouraging us to do more programming in the library's facilities um, mm -hmm. so that we can not only capture the um, attendance data to that event, but we'll also get um, door count 
numbers as well. Um, because we want to demonstrate the, the library is being used. Um, we also, uh, the objective was to kind of like provide a pick me up for students who were studying. Um, and we uh, mostly just kind of went to those locations. Though I, students may have been studying in other places. Um, they tend to not in our student union on this campus at least. Um, but uh, we did go through the Lane Library facility. And I think I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation that we have a, a second facility, the Learning Commons. Um, mm -hmm. We also went um, across the quad to the Learning Commons and uh, circulated through there as well um, each time. So library adjacent type. Location. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> library plus. Yeah, awesome. Um, so, uh, someone's asking again, um, which snacks you did have, and I think you had a slide there, if you can back up to that, to, you had your yeah. list of the ones you provided. And um, I wanna know, how did you, you said you, you had a lot of things that don't have a lot of crumbs and whatnot, but um, how did you decide on these particular, you know, how did you figure out what the students might like, or did you just guess? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these are, so besides the cheese it crackers, um, the Quaker Chewy Bars and the Rice Krispie Treats, um, the Lifesavers, all of that was stuff that was being distributed at Henderson Library. And hmm. so really, I just was like, let's keep the simple carbon copy, but we're just going to do half. Um, but I noticed that there was still a little bit of money we could let, make up. And I was like, well, I'm seeing, you know, sweet bars, um, hmm. but I'm not seeing anything savory. Let's do some crackers. Some people like both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's what we ended up purchasing. However, we did also get uh, donation and, and the donations we got um, some like Lance Cracker Packs. Those were good. Um, students really went for the Rice Krispie Treats, to be honest. Like, <laughs> sure. Those went fast. I can um, see but uh, have you done, did you do, and I don't remember, I'm, I forgive me if you mentioned this, uh, mm -hmm. surveying the students to find out what they thought or now since then or their suggestions of, of what you might our, have on the cart? Hmm. Mm -mm, we didn't do any of that, but that's a really good suggestion. Mm. That's a good suggestion. They obviously like it, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't have any complaints for like the free food we were passing around. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that would be a good idea to kind of see like um, if there's some stuff that we're missing. Mm -hmm. um, I also started uh, after this was over, I was like, there's got to be better deals than what we found. So um, as a librarian is wont to do, I started shopping and mm -hmm. uh, found some uh, other deals on, um, you know, Amazon, uh, Costco, some. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Buying in bulk for uh, at a cheaper price. Yeah. Right, right. And um, so some of the stuff that we might do for uh, this turn is. Um, if we have money for it, we might do like Capri Sun in uh, addition to the little water bottles. Um, just, I don't know, for nostalgia, I guess. Um, maybe do like um, individual uh, like Oreo cookies or something like that. Um, not like we buy a pack and hand them out individually, but they make it. No, they have the pre packaged things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because in general, I wouldn't recommend, um, just for future reference, I wouldn't recommend doing the whole, like, we bought, like, a pack of cookies, and I will hand you one and stuff, like you might do, no. um, like, in kindergarten or something. Like, for adults, they kind of want it to be wrapped up and, like, I know you didn't tamper with this. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You want to be safe with it as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um. We might have to go through legal if we did it that way anyway. So and yeah, just avoid fine. legal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you said uh, the marketing. You didn't do someone asking about marketing for it. Um, you didn't do. You did some. Yes, you said you put it into some of the. Uh, yeah. So we. Um, put it in um, our platform Eagle Engage, but right. that was the only marketing that we did for it. Um, we do have like a Instagram and a um, Facebook. Yeah. Um, there are places around campus where we can post flyers, but uh, we elected not to do that because we wanted to, again, make sure that we had enough to go around right. and I mean, we, we didn't want everybody to like influx on the first day and then like, oh no, what do we do? Um, which ended up almost happening anyway, but 
Yeah. I don't think it looks like you didn't need much of the marketing, but there would definitely be you know, the usual places yeah. that you could do mm -hmm. that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to work on wrapping up um, just in a, in a minute or two here mm -hmm. with this session. If anybody does have any desperate questions, uh, comments, thoughts you want to share. Um, yeah, please feel free to email me or um, again, message me on Instagram. I'm happy to yeah. take questions and um, just network yeah, with you folks. Yeah, Jessica's email. Um, but if you want to ask right now, get something into you, the, the questions section right away so we can get that answered. Um, the last thing I have up here right now from a library, this is from a, a public library. They, um, oh, okay. they offer snacks to kids at programs and the um, when they get early out of school program days. Um, but she wants to try and offer something more substantial. They have many kids in the community that are hungry and, you know, mm. need to um, but their board and budget won't allow it at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So she's trying to figure out how to get food for them. They're in a rural town of only 500 people. Um, I think what we've been talking about, the donations, you know, I mean, if it's a budget issue, that's the go out into your community or um, grants. Uh, we've talked about Absolutely. grants previously today and there are lots of, um, I mean, here in Nebraska, we offer grants, um, library improvement grants, youth services grants, that this kind of a program, if you wanted to initiate at your library, would definitely fall into, um, mm -hmm. possibly. Um, well, actually food, well, it would depend on the situation. So let me back up on that. Sometimes food is a cutoff for some grants, but that could be something else um, to look into mm -hmm. um, or getting with one of your um, businesses or community members mm -hmm. and say, hey, we don't have the budget, we've got this need. And mm -hmm. then once you, you know come from that side, have the budget figured out, then go to your board and say, all it costs is me going shopping like I do anyway. All right, absolutely. And another thing I'd recommend, this may not be applicable to whoever asked the question. Um, if you have a university or a community college even in your area, um, reach out to them and see if they want to partner. Um, because I know um, our library system is um, seeking opportunity to partner with the um, greater communities in our areas. Um, yeah. And that would definitely be something that we'd be interested in doing. And that's a good idea. That's a great, great suggestion. Yeah. Um, oh, and then the last comment came in that says, thanks so much for this um, session. I think this would be a great way to market library events and programs too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The car, you can have flyers or information, not just saying here's food, but also here's food and here's the thing we're doing next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Or maybe, we can, maybe we can do a uh, midterms edition next year. Yeah. <laughs> Great. OK, so a disc don't. Bleh. I guess we don't have any other desperate questions come in right now. That's great. Perfect timing here today. Thank you so much, Jessica. Absolutely. Um, sorry about your snacks. I hope everybody's hungry now. Hope everybody's not too hungry. <laughs> or if you are, you have a snack on hand. 